Yeah, welcome to Mount Cranbra Apiculture. Um, just going through these hives of bucker. It's um, 24th of July, 2021. Just going through these hives, doing some spring management on them. Um, one of the diseases I come across pretty frequently this time of year is European fowl brood. Um, this hive, I suspect, has EFB. Um, so what we'll do is just go through the, the process of, of what it looks like and what my plans are to deal with it. So. Um, it's really important when you find disease like this, you do something with it. It's compulsory under the biosecurity code of practice to, to deal with disease. You can't just let it go and let it take its course. Um, I'll put some links in the, in the comments section below about um, the BOLT course, the biosecurity online training course that you can do in Australia, and also the BOS site, which will give you a lot more background information about what I'm about to go through. But um, yeah, hopefully this is um, of use to someone. And, so I'll just go through the process of identification, um, sampling, what I'm going to actually do with the hive, and we'll try and follow it through a little bit to see how the hive goes. So first thing I want to do is pull this super off. We'll just knock it off now. That's a big heavy 10 frame super. Full of honey. Get that first frame out. Nothing in that. Get the honey there. Straight away you can see there's not a lot of um, not a lot of bees in this hive. It's, it's strong enough, but it, they've got a problem. Nothing in that. Just honey. So we're starting to get into some brood now. So just that brood pattern rings alarm bells with me straight away. See, it's quite, quite peppercorn or shotgun as we call it. Um, I can also see straight away that there's larvae laying in cells um, quite abnormally, so twisted and, and abnormal, um, laying in the bottoms of the cells. And they're not, they're not the normal pearly white round fat larvae, so they actually look sick and twisted up laying in an abnormal position in the bottom of the cell. I'll try and get some photos of these frames and include it in the video. But the, the telltale sign that it gets you straight away is that really poor pattern. I hope keep looking. So that's classic classic peppercorn or shotgun. It's it's abnormal, it's not a nice solid brood pattern that you'd expect to see in a, in a healthy beehive. And once again, when I look into the cells, I can see dead larvae that are just off color and instead of being curled up in the cell, they're actually laying flat into the bottom of the cell, twisted and abnormal. So it doesn't really have the even though it's called um, European fowl brood, it, it's not, you can't really get it mixed up with American fowl brood. It doesn't have the off center perforations that, that AFB tends to have. Yes, the cells can be a bit sunken, but it doesn't look like the classic American fowl brood. So what we'll do is take some samples. So we'll just have a look at a few more frames. I'll show you how to take a slide. Once again, that really crappy pattern. So mixed up in in the healthy larvae are um, those sick, sick off-white, um, brownish coloured larvae. There's one more here. Another. 
once again that that real classic shotgunny peppercorn pattern. So what I'll do is I'll identify a few cells here that I want to sample. So always keep a supply of slides on hand. These are just um, normal um, microscope slides that you would have used at high school for science lab, science course. So just find a, an abnormal larvae. There's one there. You see, see when I pull it out, it's just rotten. Um, doesn't doesn't rope out like American fowl brood, but that larvae is just um, it's just a massive um, of gunk really. So we'll grab our slide. It's the right way. That doesn't matter anyway. Spread it out in the slide like that. Get a good coating. Just let it dry a little bit. I always leave that match in the frame so I know in the future that I've had a bit of a, a bit of a dig around there with something wrong with it. Go in there. And that'll dry off in the sun. So that's that frame sample. That'll go off to the um, DPI lab down at Menangle. Um, that testing's free for licensed beekeepers, so always make sure you're registered and uh, You'll get that service for free. It's usually about a week turnaround. Um, I'm confident that's European fowl brood. It's not going to be anything else. It's certainly not American fowl brood. But it's always good to get it confirmed. And it is um, compulsory to notify. So EFB is a notifiable disease in New South Wales. And by sending that sample in, you're deemed to have notified. You can also notify online as well. So what do I do about this? Um, I could just um, euthanise this hive and burn a lot. I'm not going to do that because um, there's a super honey on it. So what my intention is, is to um, shake the bees out of this honey super, shake them all down so I've got a lot of bees in this box. Um, that honey will be taken back to the shed and extracted. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'll keep that box aside and make sure it comes back onto this hive so I'm not mixing those um, contaminated frames up with anything else. So the queen excluder, that super, the lid, and the frames will all come back to this hive. Just maintains that barrier system. What I could do, if I'm um, assuming this diagnosis comes back as European fowl brood, is give it a dose of oxytetracycline. Now that, that's legal in New South Wales. Um, European fowl brood is treatable, whereas American fowl brood isn't. So if I can give it a dose of oxytetracycline, that will fix them. Uh, problem is, is it gives me uh, residue issues. Uh, and you know, we're always trying to use less um, antibiotics and those sort of things in our, in our bees. So uh, next plan is to give them a feed of sugar syrup. Okay, so that'll just stimulate them to, to clean and just with pushing them back down to a single. Um, lots more bees in there. The feed of sugar syrup, it just lifts their mood a bit, um, gives them a nice feed and um, just helps to clean their gut out and get rid of those um, EFB uh, bacteria in there. Some beekeepers add um, supplements to that to that sugar syrup as well, just to give them a bit of a boost. Um, that can often just fix them, but the next step after that will be to requeen as well. So I'll definitely requeen them, and when I bring my mating nukes back here, um, I'll give them a new queen. So let's get a feeder into them. So I'll put that in there. Put that. There, just to make the space up. Get our sugar syrup. This is just one to one sugar syrup. And that'll give them, it'll cheer them up a bit. So 
So what I'll do now is, um, and I won't bore you with the with the process, but I'll shake all the bees off this um, out of this honey super, and um, just try and maximise the amount of bees in there. So I'll just turn the camera off now and, and do that. So back again, that's got all those bees shaken out of that um, honey super. Back into the single, there's a few down the front, they'll crawl in. So that just tightens that, that hive right up. More bees in there, uh, less work for them to do in terms of keeping the hive warm or cool, um, defending the hive. They can concentrate a bit more on dealing with the, what I suspect is the European fowl brood in there. Um, I think I didn't do with the slide was just label it. So. Ah, uh, typical. Let's get my brand on it, which is L two sixty. So that'll go on to a, a testing form and accompany the sample, um, which will accompany the sample off to the lab. <laughs> That's all good. Get our feeder back in. As I said earlier, that sugar syrup will just give them a bit of a lift. Better outlook on life. Just give them a bit of a kick along and help them deal with that with that bacterial infection. European fowl brood. Leave the queen excluder on just so it stays with the hive. Bump those bees off. Uh, the thing I'll do as well is just make a note on top of the hive what I've done. So twenty fourth, seven, twenty one. Um, DFB sampled and reduced to a single. So that's all I need to do. Uh, don't forget those references to the bulk course and the Be Aware site for more information about um, diseases of honeybees. So. Once again, if you're in Australia, I really recommend you do the bulk course and read the Be Aware site. There's lots of information in there. Um, do not go looking for help on Facebook. You will just go down a rabbit hole. So always go to reliable sources like the bulk course and the Be Aware site. Um, I can't stress that enough. Thanks for watching. So we're back in the honey shed. Um, there's a few things I need to do after having this uh, identification of probable European fowl mood. A few things I need to do just to uh, meet my biosecurity requirements. Um, first thing is, I don't have to do this, but it's a good idea to submit a test and get it confirmed. Um, you both, you're doing, what you're doing there is just being sure that it is what it is. Um, and you also, by doing this, you, you're technically notifying as well. I'm gonna notify online as well, but um, sometimes I've just notified in New South Wales by sending this in, you have to notify within 24 hours. Um, I can't do that because I can't, I can't send it till Monday and today's Saturday. So um, I'll do it the old fashioned way by sending it in the mail. I'll notify online and I'll record it in my records as well. So first thing is to get the diagnostics form filled in. This is for New South Wales. This service is free and it's part of being registered as a beekeeper in New South Wales you get a free diagnostic service. You're mad not to register, I don't understand why people don't. Um, 
So initial diagnosis, registration number L260 and commercial. Submit a name, Glenn Locke, uh, 235 Morrows Road, Nana. Glenn, ABN, none of their business. Uh, email Glenn at Arara Valley Honey.com.au. They've got all this stuff on record down there. 0459 06 Acre site, uh, I'll just say Bucker. Uh, we've got options to put um, coordinates and things in there. Diseases suspected, I always cross AFB and EFB. That way they'll, they'll check for both, they do anyway. Um, slide or smear, one. Hives at risk, one. So I just put in the notes here, um, probable EFB, not roping. Uh, just name, sign, and date, 24th, 3rd, 21. So it's as simple as that. Just put that in the mail. I um, tied up with a bit of tape, tied this, folded up, and just put it in a little padded bag. Cost a couple of bucks. And that, that'll go off on, um, on Monday. So that's our slide there. It's nicely, nicely dried out, got the smear on it. And um, it's labelled there with L260 as well. I just put their um, sample collection date was 24th of 3rd, um, L260. Um, so that's that part done. So the next step is to report online. Um, so I'll put the link to this in the uh, comment section under the video. You go to the DPI website, you the DPI website. Uh, report is about bees or beehives, pest or diseases. My rego, L260, date observed 24th of July. Um, unfortunately, this drop down box doesn't give an option for European fowl brood. I'm sure I've told them about this, but nothing's done. Nothing happened. Nothing's happened. Uh, describe the pest or disease and damage it's causing. So I just put up there, not sure. Number of eyes affected. Um, describe the pest and diseases. The, to describe the pest or disease and damage it's causing European fowl brood. They can work that out. You can also upload photos. So I've just put the address in there. Continue. You can be anonymous or if you want to make a, a complaint about someone else's beehives if they're not being looked after, I'll just put my name in there. I'm from Prime Producer. My phone number, my email address is already pre-filled. Um, that should be right to submit. So that gives you a reference code. And so I've now met my vice peer requirement to report a notifiable disease. Even though they don't let me, they don't let me say it's European fowl brood, just typical. Um, the only thing I need to do is just keep records. So under the vice security code of practice, I need to keep records of how I manage my hives. So today's the 24th, 7, 21, um, Bucker. And I'm just going to put there uh, one hive EFB sample taken, reduced to single uh, fed one one sugar. Put more information there. That's that's all I need to do. Um, yeah, so in, in that case, that's that's all I need to do to meet my requirements. So I'll, I'll write other stuff in there about what I did today at that site. So you must keep written records or, or some sort of a record of, of 
of your buy security activity with your, with your B hides. So that's really all I need to do. Um, this will get sent away on Monday, and um, that sort of tidies up this end of the of finding EFB. So I hope that's all helped. Um, yeah, look for those links in the uh, comments section under the video, and that'll sort of help, particularly the people in New South Wales. But if um, you're in a state or overseas, there's still some really good um, information there about honeybee diseases. They're the same all over the world, so there's nothing special about our, our EFB or anyone else's EFB. So there you go, thank you very much.